Wow, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. And y'all are so far up in the air, it looks kind of crazy. I look like I'm what looking way up to you, so I gotta bring you down a little bit. Bring you down a little bit to earth. Wow, what a morning already. May had an appointment today at 3.30. So I get up, I take my shower, I get ready for Bible study, and she says, Mama, I can't go at 3.30. I said, why? I got class. I said, well, good Lord, May, you told me plainly you could go on Wednesdays after, you know, lunchtime. So I had to call the doctor's office, and then my brother called me, and so I'm finally getting started. Um, we are on the gospel era, and um, and I haven't even had my cup of coffee, y'all. Um, I'm late. I told y'all plainly that it's going to start anywhere from like 8 to like 8, really 8.30, because my kids are getting ready and going to school. And when first Chris, when school first started, of course, they got out the door on time. But now they're just kind of lagging around, and they get out when they want to. But I had my shower early. I'm nice and perky. I got lots to do today. Um, we are studying the gospel era, and we all know what the gospels are, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they are the life of Jesus, okay, and um, this starts out with this crazy story, it's really strange, um, I guess I can read it to you since I don't have many people on here, and because our lesson today is really short and simple and and I know it's the gospel, so you would think it would be such a short lesson, but it is. It says, I stand by the, this is a, a doctor, is a, is a brilliant surgeon who wrote a penetrating book entitled Mortal Lessons. It says, Notes on the Art of Surgery, and it, he writes, the only thing about telling y'all this is I can't have my coffee. I'll read a paragraph and drink a sip. How's that? I stand by the bed where a young woman lies, her face post-operative, her mouth twisted in a palsy clownish. A tiny twig of a facial nerve, the one to the muscles of her mouth, has been severed, severed, severed. She will be thus from now on. So he's cut a nerve to her mouth. Let me take my hair down. It looks crazy. Yeah. I look very fresh this morning. Um, so this surgeon is looking at a woman on the table that he has, he's done surgery on and he's severed a nerve that goes to her mouth, okay? That kind of gives you where we're at. It says, um, she will be this way from now on. The surgeon had followed with religious fake fervor. The curve of her flesh, I promise you that. Nevertheless, to remove the tumor in her cheek, I had to cut the little nerve. Her husband is in the room. He stands on the opposite side of the bed, and together they seem to dwell in the evening lamplight. Isolated from me, private. Who are they, I ask myself. He and this wry mouth I have made who gaze at each other and touch each other generously and greedily. The young woman speaks, Will I always be like this? She asks. Yes, I say. It's because the nerve was cut. She nods and is silent, but the young man smiles. I like it, he says. It's kind of cute. All at once I know who he is. I understand and I lower my gaze. One is not bold in an encounter with a god. Unmindful, he bends to kiss her crooked mouth, and I am so close I can see how he twists his own lips to accommodate hers. To show that her kiss still works, I remember that the gods appeared in ancient Greece as mortals, and I hold my breath and let the wonder in. So this is a story from a doctor and he talks about the love of this man for this woman whom he has servered her lip, nerve, and she has a crooked smile, but he seems to love her just as much or more. 
So then the author says to us of our Bible study, that is the spirit of Jesus. Man's link with God has been severed through sin. And he twisted himself to accommodate us. I read that three times last night, so I'm going to read it again. That is the spirit of Jesus. Man's link with God has been severed through sin. And he twisted himself to accommodate us. That is the spirit of Jesus. Man's link with God has been severed through by sin. And Jesus twists himself to accommodate us. And gave us the kiss of eternal life. What about that? But to do so, he gave his own life in our behalf, Jesus. At the same time, so tender and powerful, the most remarkable figure ever have lived. And why not? He was God incarnate. And then he goes on to tell us that the birth of Jesus split history like a thunderbolt on a hot July afternoon. Everything before his birth we call before Christ, and everything after we call after. A.D. Anno Domini. In the year of our Lord, his story predicted throughout the Old Testament is told in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. Review. The storyline is that Jesus comes in fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies of a Savior and offers salvation and the true kingdom of God. While some accept him, most reject him. And he is crucified, buried, and resurrected. So our fill in the blank is um, prophecies, P-R-O-P-H-E-C-I-E-S, prophecies, salvation, and reject. Those are our fill-in-the-blank in our summary. I'll read the summary one more time in case you're writing notes. Jesus comes in fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies of a Savior and offers salvation and the true kingdom of God. While some accept him, most reject him. He is crucified, buried, and resurrected. There are four main divisions in the gospel era. Okay, the first one is his early life, which is his childhood to baptism. Number two is early ministry, which is his initial acceptance. initially accepted him. Number three is the later ministry and that is growing rejection because people began to grow in rejection. Number four, death and resurrection, his final rejection. Under the first one, which is childhood to baptism, it just tells us that um, he was, of course, born through a mir miraculous conception with the Holy Spirit and Mary, uh, the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. And now we all know where Bethlehem is because we, we've seen that on the map yesterday. And it says um, he they have to run off to Egypt to save him from Herod's attempt on his life. And then later they travel to Nazareth and they live there. He learns the trade of a carpenter and apparently lives a fairly normal life from childhood to the time of his baptism. Now, when he's 30 years old, his cousin, John the Baptist, 
um, is ministering and baptizing people in the Jordan River. After Jesus is baptized by his cousin John, a remarkable event takes place, and God the Father is heard speaking from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And the Holy Spirit is in the visible form of a dove. It descends on him, and he's led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, where he is attempted by Satan for 40 days. Um, then, of course, he rejects Satan, and he's ready to begin making himself known as the Messiah after this uh, happens. So the number two is his early ministry, his initial acceptance. And it tells you that um, he begins his public ministry. Um, he has a two-fold focus. The first one is that he's the predicted Messiah, um, the Christ, and the people should believe in him. Second, he challenges the people to live a life of genuine righteousness not external hypocrisy of the religious leaders. So, twofold is that he tells people he's the Messiah, the Christ. He asks people to live righteously. Now, he validates his message by doing miracles and uh, much of the crowd and the early people um, are encouraged and they do accept him initially. Now, number three is his later ministry. And this is when the, uh, the rejection grows larger. Um, it says that the religious leaders are very jealous of him. And uh, the growing rejection results in a progression in Jesus' ministry pattern. Excuse me. It says that, um, I think I have to sneeze. One second. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. I may have to go again. It says the growing rejection res results in a progression in Jesus' ministry. He begins to focus more attention on the mounting opposition from the religious leaders, warning them of the seriousness of their attitude. And then at the same time, he began setting aside more and more time for the 12 disciples whom he has chosen, preparing them to carry on without him. Um, he travels a good bit at this time, but his home base is in Capernaum. Capernaum is on the north bank Sea of Galilee. And yesterday when I showed you on Google Earth, we actually sat down a man and did our view in Capernaum uh, for the Sea of Galilee. And this is the area that Jesus actually um, based his home in during the uh, later ministry, his later ministry. Okay, the death and resurrection. The Jews become more and more polarized about Jesus, either following him enthusiastically or resenting him deeply. And in the volatile atmosphere um, of the festive time of the Passover, when Jesus and many other Jews are in Jerusalem, the religious leaders finally are able to stir up enough enthusiasm for Jesus' crucifixion. Uh, of course, they subject him to a series of mock trials on false charges. Then he is crucified on is crucified, buried, and he, and he rose again after being in the tomb for three days. That's it, y'all. Simple, short. We don't have to uh, listen to the gruesome. You know, when I read the Gospels, I just love them until I get to the point where they're about to take Jesus and they and they're about to start being mean to him. And every time I start reading that part, I can hardly finish it. I just don't even want to read it. I'm, 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 I guess there's just parts of it. I just don't want to read it. Uh, I can hardly handle what he went through. So uh, the self-test is four main divisions in the gospel era. You have his early life. 
you have his early ministry, you have his later ministry, and then you have the death and resurrection. Um, and then you fill in the blanks. And that's pretty much it, um, the gospel era. And tomorrow we will talk about the church era. Um, I hope you have enjoyed today's Bible study. Let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. Um, thank you for all of those who do take the time to tune in and listen to um, this Bible study and learn more about your word, how to study the Bible, or how to understand the Bible, I should say. Um, please be with us as we go throughout our day. Help us be uh, productive today. Help us shine your light. Help us um, be the Christians that we ought to be. Uh, thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus, to die on that cross to help us uh, and provide us with a Savior and an ultimate sacrifice. Um, we just thank you for your gift of love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.